Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome uh, back and uh, let us uh, welcome back to this immunology lectures and uh, we will be talking today about the effector T cells. So for the last uh, four classes we have been discussing about uh, the maturation and activation of the B cells that is the humoral branch of the immunity. In, in one of my beginning lectures, uh, in, in, the, in the starting uh, lectures, I had already discussed a little bit about the adaptive branch of the immunity. So the adaptive branch of the immunity comprises of signals uh, that are processed from the innate cells which are primarily the antigen uh, processing cells. and uh, they are being processed and presented. So, these uh, antigens are presented to uh, the T or the B cells. And uh, the adaptive immunity clearly has two branches. One is the humoral branch which is the B cell mediated and antibody mediated branch and the cell mediated branch which is the T cell mediated or the T lymphocyte mediated branch. So, these antigens are usually carried by the dendritic cells or the macrophages which present it to the T cells that is the naive cells, the naive T cells or the naive B cells and then activates them that they activates the adaptive part of the immunity. Now, uh, from the earlier lectures you have learned quite some a little bit about the uh, T cell development, the B cell development, the T cell development, antibody, antibody mediated effector mechanisms, the responses that are generated by the antibodies. We will learn more about the antibody responses. We have not yet discussed about the um, complements, uh, the complement proteins, the complement systems that we will be discussing uh, very soon which are the antibody mediated effector mechanisms. So, we have kind of learned some of the effector mechanisms uh, by the T and the B cells and also the development of these two cell types like the T cells and the B cell developments, their differentiation and all these things. I have also uh, introduced you a little bit to the T cell differentiation that is when a T cell, a naive T cell is activated. You remember the activation process, how a T cell gets activated by the different types of interactions with the dendritic cell primarily or with the macrophages, they get activated. So, with the APCs, with the antigen presenting cells and one of the major um, uh, cell types of this, this type of cell is the dendritic cell because dendritic cell is kind of the cell that is connecting between the innate and the adaptive system. So, it is a cell of both innate system adaptive system. Although there are very very classical uh, differentiation between the cells of the innate and the adaptive system. So, when we call the cells of the adaptive system, we usually understand the B and the T cell. When we say cells of the innate system, we usually understand the neutrophils, basophils, uh, mast cells. Uh, macrophages, these are the cells of the innate system. I already, uh, you got an idea in the previous classes or I have already told you several times um, and discussed it that the two systems of the immune system, the two systems, the innate and the adaptive system, they are very, very well coordinated. So, it is not that the inert system works discreetly or the adaptive system works discreetly. So, they are very well coordinated. There is a coordination between these two systems and they try to help each other. So, like the inert system when it fails to kill a pathogen, 
when it fails to uh, destroy a pathogen and clear an infection, it transmits that signal to the cells of the eruptive system. Once the cells of the eruptive system gets activated by the antigen presenting cells or these macrophages, dendritic cells, they get activated. Once they are activated, they again come back and help the cells of the innate systems to clear the pathogen. And these cells which actually help in the infection clearing or clearing of the infection, that means which are involved in this uh, immune responses directly or indirectly, they are known as the effector cells. So, they are the effector T cells. So, for example, T cells, if you go back to the activation and differentiation of the T cells, you will see that the T cells, be it a CD8 plus cell or a CD4 plus cell. So, CD8 plus cell will develop into a cytotoxic cell, CD4 plus cell will develop into a helper cell. Be it a CD8 or be it a CD4, you have either the memory cells or the effector cells. And the effector cells are those cells which ultimately helps in either they directly go and uh, attack the pathogen and kill the pathogen or they will be involved in indirectly they will try to help the other cell types. They can also help the cells of the adaptive system. So, there are T helper cells that are responsible for um, uh, helping the B cell development for example or B cell proliferation. If you have uh, 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 so, I have discussed this in the last uh, few lectures as well. So, you have seen how the T helper cells, they help in the B cell development, proliferation and activation. So, they are helpful cells, they help other cells in many ways. They also help the cells of the innate system and that is why they are known as the effector cells that means the effector T cells they are the T cell effectors. Now, how these cells of adaptive system they become effector T cells that is a big thing. So, that that has been so there has been a lot of research a lot of understandings of these mechanisms and people try to understand how these cells they actually become effector cells which were the cells of the adaptive system how they get activated and become the cells of the adaptive system. You have learned the activation part by now. So, if we quickly go back to our, um, our immunological uh, overview that we have discussed earlier, we remember this, uh, this, uh, this picture where we have seen that a T cell, a naive T cell, let us say this is, this is a CD8 plus or a CD4 plus naive T cell can interact with an antigen presenting cell like a dendritic cell by the presence of the MHC molecule on the APC on the antigen presenting cell which presents the antigen with the TCR or the T, uh, T cell receptor and the core receptor CD4 or CD8 core receptor and there are many other interactions we are not discussing here whatever. So, once these interactions occur then it is destined then it is committed to become a T cytotoxic or a T helper cell. A T cytotoxic cell is also an effector cell and we know or we have uh, uh, learned uh, in some of our earlier lectures how the T cytotoxic cells can they had directly have killing effects. So, they are the direct killers. So, they can directly go and kill they can inject uh, enzymes they can inject um, uh, bacteriocidals or uh, ki pathogen killing uh, materials into the cells, into the infected cells and that is how they kill. So, we have learned the effector mechanisms uh, a little bit about the T cytotoxic cells. Now, what are the effectors or the effector cells of the T helper cell type? So, if we go uh, and see what are the helper cell types and uh, we will see that the helper T cells they can develop into different effector T cells as well as certain other uh, T cells which are not really the effector cells, but they are involved in some uh, other processes like the TFH or the T follicular helper cells. We know them very well because we have learnt about their uh, role 
in the B cell development process and the T reg or the T regulatory cells and they are also very important in regulate in regulatory roles. So, they have regulator uh, they are the regulators of the T cell responses. So, uh, these are the two different uh, types which are not really uh, involved in the effector mechanisms or the effector responses and the three major effector T cells that are involved in the effector mechanisms they are the TH1 or the T helper 1 type, the TH2 and the TH17. We uh, I already told you a little bit in, uh, in my previous uh, lectures probably how these cell types they differentiate into different cell types. So, it is primarily controlled by the presence of the cytokines, the interleukins. So, depending on what kind of interleukin or what kind of cytokine is present in the surrounding, it will develop into a Th1 or a Th2 or a Th17 cell type. So, for example, if there is a lot of IL-12 in the surrounding interleukin 12, then it will develop into a Th1 cell type. If there is uh, a lot of interleukin 4, IL-4, it will develop into a Th2 cell type and if there is a lot of interleukin IL-6 and along with that not only IL-6 along with that TGF beta together then it will develop into a Th17 cell type 17 and the Th17 is primarily named as Th17 because it is one of the major sources of the interleukin IL-17. So, these are the three major uh, cell types uh, or the effector cell types that are being produced in presence of the different cytokines. We will discuss cytokines very soon in uh, our upcoming lectures about the different types of cytokines, their mechanisms, how they work, what they do, all these things. So, for the time being, uh, let us just learn the names of the cytokines and their actions and their uh, how they help in this effector mechanisms uh, involved in this helper uh, that are induced by this uh, helper cells. So, uh, now this T helper type 1, type 2, type uh, uh, this TH1, TH2 and the TH17, they can help in distinct mechanisms. So, what are the distinct mechanisms that the TH1 cell is involved in? So, the TH1 cell is primarily involved in clearing of intracellular pathogens. That means, what is intracellular pathogens? or intracellular bacteria. Intracellular pathogens means those pathogens or bacteria that has been ingested or phagocytosed by a macrophage for example. So, in the tissue when there is a uh, if you look into the tissue here uh, in the tissue when there is a uh, tissue damage or um, uh, any insect bite or whatever then there is a lot of uh, pathogens that is in rushing that is coming in and these pathogens are first they meet the cells of the inner system and they meet the neutrophils, the macrophages, the mast cells and all this. So, now these macrophages they can engulf uh, the bacteria. So, they once they end so that once these pathogens they enter inside the bacteria the cells of the inner uh, the, the, the cells of the adaptive system for example this th1 cells they can help in activating the macrophages to become cytotoxic so they themselves are not uh, cytotoxic but i mean the, these t helper cells they themselves are not toxic so they are not cytotoxic but they can release some cytokines give some signaling molecules so that they can turn these macrophages into cytotoxic cells and they can activate and enhance the killing by the macrophages. So, these cells of the adaptive system they come to the periphery or come to this uh, they, uh, they uh, get activated then they differentiate and then they uh, move through the bloodstream and then they come to this damaged tissue area. So, they infiltrate this damaged tissue area and there they start to show their effector functions. 
how do these cells of the or what signaling or what exactly directs these cells to this site of action. So, these cells normally the naive T cells they express certain types of uh, cell addition molecules. I, I, I have already discussed about the cell addition molecules a little bit in my inflammatory response classes. If you remember from that classes that CAM we have discussed about different types of cell addition molecules like the selectins, the mucins, the immunoglobulin uh, like uh, CAMs, the ICAMs. So, these CAMs are expressed or the cell addition molecules that are expressed on the surface of different cell types. They are expressed on the surface of the endothelium, they are expressed on the surface of the uh, lymphocytes, many other immune uh, cell types. So, these CAMs or the cell addition molecules, they help in adherence and uh, migration of the lymphocytes from one place to the other. So, they are basically the helpers in migration. And these cell types, this matured, finally differentiated matured cell types, developed uh, T cells, effector T cells, they can express different, different types of CAMs on their surfaces, as well as they can also express different types of chemokine receptors. We will discuss what chemokines are. For the time being, let us understand from the name that chemokines are the chemo attractants that means they attract some cell types. So, chemokines are small molecules which can attract a cell type by binding to the specific receptors present on the surface of the cell. So, for example, a chemokine can bind to a specific chemokine receptor and so it is a, it's a specific receptor ligand interaction. So, the chemokine is the ligand which binds to its specific receptor and attracts or pulls that cells. So, it is like a magnet to iron interaction that is occurring and this interaction is very, very, very specific. So, it can draw the cells or pull the cells to a specific location. So, that is how these cells, these cells of the adaptive system, these T cells, this fully differentiated and developed T cells they now start to express different types of chemokine receptors. For example, uh, a knife T cell usually expresses on its uh, surface a CCR7. As soon as this knife T cell starts to differentiate into different types of T cells, effector T cells, their expression of CCR7 goes down and then start they start to express different other chemokine receptors and different T helper cells they express different chemokine receptors. For example, uh, these uh, cells this Th1 cells they express CCR5, the Th2 they express CCR4 and the Th17 they express CCR uh, 6. So, this they, they start to express that uh, like the naive T cells, they were expressing CCR7 and once this differentiates into the different T helper uh, cell types like the effector cell types, they start to express different, different chemokine receptors like CCR5, CCR4, CCR6 on their surface. And by virtue of that, because of that, they now start to move to different locations different locations and start to show different responses, different immunological responses. So, what we were discussing about is that these uh, uh, cells, this uh, the Th1 cells, they are primarily responsible for intracellular pathogens. They are responsible for intracellular pathogens. Then we have the T helper cell type 2, which are mostly responsible for parasites, for killing of parasites and helminths. Because uh, they, uh, they basically uh, go to the, they, they changes the mucosal smooth muscle motility. And when there is a parasitic infection or a helminthic infection, 
particularly in the stomach or in the intestine. So they changes the uh, uh, mucosal uh, or smooth muscle motility and tries to clear that uh, helminthic uh, attack or the parasitic attack, how we will discuss. So these are the Th2 type cell and the Th17, they actually elicit a class of responses which are responsible for extracellular pathogens. So like the Th1 uh, is responsible for intracellular pathogens, these are responsible for extracellular. So those which are not being internalized, that has to be dealt with. They are mainly dealt with the Th17 class of uh, 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 cell types, the effector cell types. Now what these uh, Th1 cell types they do primarily, one of the major functions is that they activate a macrophage. So they can activate the macrophage. And how do they do that? So these are uh, for example a Th helper type 1 cell and this is a macrophage which has engulfed a pathogen. So with a pathogen inside that means intracellular pathogen in here and that can present that has that expresses the MHC on the surface and that interacts with this uh, uh, T cell by the T cell receptor and the CD4 co-receptor and as well as there is a because this matured uh, this differentiated matured Th1 cells they express on their surface the CD40 ligand CD40 L we, uh, we by now we have known about the CD40 and CD40 L interaction from our B cell development processes. So they express on their surface the CD40 ligand and these macrophages they express the CD40. So now they can now interact with the CD40 and CD40 ligand interaction occurs and after this interaction occurs there are of course there is signal transduction more uh, gene uh, transcription downstream transcription of more genes and that leads to uh, the production of different uh, cytotoxic materials some cytokines that will go and kill the bacteria more more efficiently. So this is one of the functions so they now kill the bacteria or the pathogen primarily the bacteria they kill the bacteria or the pathogen more efficiently and one of the major signaling in this entire process is that these, these, these uh, T cells they starts to release a specific cytokine which is known as interferon gamma. So INF gamma, we will learn about these uh, 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 interferons, we will learn about all these interferons and the cytokines in our later classes very soon. Uh, so this they, they start to express, uh, they start to produce this interferon gamma which has a very important role in activating these macrophages. So now these macrophages they become activated. A second mechanism by which this uh, Th1 cells they work is also they increases the production of the monocytes monocyte production in the bone marrow and that is primarily uh, done uh, due to uh, cytokines like IL-3. Then they also produce a very important uh, cytokine that is known as TNF-alpha. Uh, we will learn about TNF-alpha and its uh, roles primarily in uh, later in our cytokine classes. But this TNF-alpha is one of the very very important uh, signaling molecules. They can activate the endothelium, they can increase the uh, uh, vascular permeability and they allow more macrophages to come into the blood. They can increase vascular permeability and allows more macrophage entry into blood. Now once more and more macrophages comes to comes out in the blood that has to go to the site of action as well. So now macrophages which are coming to the blood they has to now migrate to the site of action and show their action. So they have to do their action do their function and for that you need some chemokines for example. So one of such chemokines is CCL2 that is also released by this Th1 cell type and they can attract more macrophages. So CCL2 is one of those chemokines that attracts more macrophages. They can attract more macrophages to the site of action. 
or the site of infection. Okay. So, the Th1 cells at least performs four different effector functions that we can uh, summarize here that is they can produce interferon gamma, they can activate the macrophages and induce uh, cell killing, bacterial cell killing more and more. They can also induce production of the monocytes, uh, they can also allow more macrophage entry into the blood and they can also attract those macrophages to the site of action. Coming to the action of the Th2 cell types, what are the Th2 cell types? So, what, as I told the primary action of the Th2 cell types is to uh, increase the motility of uh, the mucosal uh, smooth muscle. So, they activate the mucosal smooth muscle, they activate the mucosal smooth muscle. increases the motility. So, increases motility and by that they helps in clearing of the pathogen. Primarily the helminths, the worms, the worms that infects our intestine for example. So, those are dealt with this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, Th2 responses, type 2 responses and they can also they can also activate the eosinophils and the basophils for example. So, they activates, activates the eosinophils for example and activation of the eosinophils and the basophils would lead to the release of many cytotoxic uh, molecules. So, they release a lot of cytotoxic release uh, cytotoxic material or molecules that can clear the pathogens primarily the parasites. So, they, they deal with the parasites as I told and they also secretes a class of uh, this uh, interleukins like IL-3 or IL-9 for example and they can activate the they can activate the mucosal mast cells. So, they activates they activates the mucosal mast cells, the mast cells this is another mechanism. So, this, this is another mechanism of amplification of the signal. They can activate the mucosal mast cells and the mast cells they are granulocytes. So, they will start releasing the granules like the histamines for example, the histamines, the prostaglandins and that will Basically, this uh, release of this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, histamines or this uh, prostaglandins, so these vasoactive amines that would lead to also increase the fluid flow in the mucosal lumen. So, a basic mechanism by which this Th2 response works is sometimes also known as a weep and sweep mechanism. So, it is also called a weep and sweep mechanism, weep and sweep mechanism. So, they sweep out the pathogen from the uh, intestine or from the body and try to clear that pathogen primarily the helminths and the parasites. And uh, a third effector mechanism is the Th17 response and the Th17 response also it uh, induces the in epithelial cells. So, they induce the epithelial cells and tries to, so as I told that these are uh, the Th17 response primarily deals with extracellular pathogens. So, the pathogens which has not been ingested or which has not been internalized. So, that means uh, they help certain cell types for release of cytotoxic material or release of some bacteriostatic or bacteriocidal material. So, they primarily induces the, um, so they produce interleukin 17 as I told that they are the primary producers of interleukin 17 which activates they activate they activate the epithelial cells the epithelial cells and that leads to the production of the antimicrobial proteins. So, produces antimicrobial microbial proteins and bacteriostatic and uh, bacteriocidal antimicrobial proteins, peptides, 
and leading to ba uh, bacteriostatic or bactericidal effect. This also they also uh, produce they they as uh, they are the primary uh, secretors of uh, IL-17 as I told. So IL-17 also recruits more neutrophils neutrophils to the site of action neutrophils which are the fastest acting cell of the immune system so they go and infiltrate into the site of action or the site of infection so il17 is one of those uh, cytokines that can actually uh, bring more neutrophils to the site of action and as well as they uh, they are the also they secrete this uh, ccl20 uh, the ccl20 which is a chemokine and the ccl20 attracts more th17 sorry so they attract more of this uh, t helper uh, 17 cells to the site of action so uh, quickly uh, um, a quick uh, look into this entire picture uh, is that uh, that uh, this these uh, effector cell types this um, uh, the, the the helper cell types they are uh, the effector cell types are there are the three different effector cell types the th1 the th2 and of course the th17 are the three major effector cell types uh, th1 primarily is involved in intracellular dealing with the intracellular pathogens that means with the pathogens which has been internalized uh, so um, they help the or activates the macrophages they help in monocyte production they allow more macrophage entry into the blood and also migration of those macrocytes or uh, of those uh, sorry uh, of those macrophages um, into attraction of those macrophages into the site of infection a second type of response is initiated by the th2 cell types they uh, produce the one of the major producer of uh, il13 for example one uh, interleukin 13 and which activates the mucosal uh, smooth muscle increases its motility and primarily by uh, the production of the mucus by the goblet cells so they can activate the uh, goblet cells and enhance uh, the mucus production and by that they can also increase the uh, motility of the um, uh, mucosal smooth muscles they can activate the eosinophils uh, then by that and recruit more eosinophils and which can produce a lot of cytotoxic molecules that can clean up or clear the parasites or the helminths and uh, this is primarily done by uh, uh, the action of interleukin 5 which is also produced from the th2 cells and then uh, they also produce il3 and il9 which primarily activates the mucosal mast cells and mast cells as you know are the major sources of the histamine this so mucosal mast cells are a small uh, category of the mast cells that are present here and they are activated by this uh, th2 cell types and they can produce histamine or prostaglandin leukotrienes all these uh, molecules which actually helps in uh, the uh, uh, which actually helps in um, the vasodilation and thereby increases the fluid flow to the uh, lumen so uh, then to the mucosal lumen and then by that action they can actually sweep out the pathogen and thirdly the th17 cell types they are mostly dealing with extracellular uh, infection uh, or pathogens extracellular pathogens so they activate the epithelial cell to produce a lot of antimicrobial proteins uh, the, the, they, they in, induces the uh, epithelial cell to produce a lot of uh, antimicrobial proteins they also produce they are the major producer of the il17 interleukin 17 so they which actually attracts more neutrophils uh, to the site of action and they also attract more of the th17 cell type to the site of action so we kind of uh, today try to summarize our or get an overview of the different effector cell types I very 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 uh, I try to give a very 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 preliminary idea about the three different effector mechanisms what they do what the major functions are you can get more details in the books but uh, we, uh, we really do not have uh, scope or time to go into more details uh, so I will stop it here uh, for the uh, effector uh, T cells primarily the T effector cells uh, we will stop the discussion uh, here and we will uh, try to learn more about the different 
uh, effector molecules, the effector mechanisms. Uh, we will try to learn about the complement proteins, the cytokines, more in details, and then we will see how they work in the different uh, contexts. So, how, what, are the, what are the major um, roles of the different cytokines in different contexts in the innate and the adaptive system? What are, the, what are their roles? So, we will discuss all these things slowly, slowly in our upcoming lectures in more details. So, that is all from this lecture and thank you.